Imagine the world after the dinosaurs went extinct. The giants are gone. The mammals that should take their place are not there yet. And overall, all the creatures of the planet are very small. Except for the Titanoboa, a huge snake, the largest in the history of evolution, and it's the king of that world. About 50 feet long and weighing 2,500 pounds, it was impossible to contest with such a creature. Almost impossible. Only one animal could challenge the Titanoboa, a recently discovered ancient freshwater crocodile. So how did these two creatures get along? To understand this, we need to look at the opponent of the giant snake. Acherontosuchus guajirensis is the ancestor of modern crocodiles, which could reach 20 feet in length. It may not seem like much compared to a 50-foot-long snake, but this crocodile gave the Titanoboa a lot of hard time, mostly because of the similar diet. Judging by the data the scientists have today, this ancient crocodile had teeth specifically designed for hunting and eating fish. That is, the croc had exactly the same diet as the Titanoboa. And since these two lived in the same ecosystem, conflict was inevitable. Moreover, some scientists suggest that this 20-foot-long crocodile evolved specifically to fight huge snakes over food. You get it, right? An entire species has evolved with only one goal in mind – fight. Of course, it wasn't easy. The researchers argue that the Titanoboa could simply swallow its competitor. Young crocs were at risk. They had to constantly watch out for the giant snake not to end up as prey. Well, when you're a 50-foot-long predator, it doesn't really matter what to swallow – a fish or a crocodile. To stay safe, the ancient crocodiles had to grow up. But this takes time. You can simply die before you reach the size you're aiming for. Has anything changed over 60 million years? It has on a planetary scale, but not so much for these rivals. Titanoboa lost the war and went extinct, but its descendants still live on Earth, like the descendants of that ancient crocodile. They look different, they've changed their habitat, and yet the war goes on. If you look at the statistics, it becomes clear that crocodiles and alligators end up on the menu of pythons quite often. For example, in 2005, a dead Burmese python was found in Florida with an American alligator bursting out of its stomach. In 2014, an olive python killed and ate a freshwater crocodile in a lake near Mount Isa. These are just two random examples I picked from the list of all documented cases. Apparently, clashes between the descendants of the ancient crocodile and descendants of the Titanoboa happen especially often in Florida, South America, and Australia. Yes, the opponents were scattered around the world, but this didn't lessen their resolve to fight each other to the death. In fact, both snakes and crocodiles with alligators still have the right skill set to remain sworn enemies. You don't need me to tell you how pythons kill their prey. They coil their body around it when the animal exhales. Eventually, the prey simply asphyxiates or suffers heart failure. In any case, the animal will no longer be able to fight back, and the python will swallow it whole, even if the dinner is much larger than the snake itself. That's possible thanks to the flexible jaws given to them by evolution. At the same time, crocodile teeth are sharp and strong enough to razor right through the snake. Also, don't forget about the powerful jaws and incredible bite force. As long as the crocodile can move its head, it's capable of causing serious damage to the enemy. Crocodiles are also protected by armor. Their skin is very tough, so much so that not a single snake can bite through it. Well, actually, snakes don't even try. Millions of years of fighting have taught snakes a different strategy to target the neck and shoulder area in order to avoid possible bites. The snakes try to grab onto the crocodile's skull and hold the enemy in place, gradually killing it. And even if a crocodile manages to bite a snake, it'll be able to survive it thanks to its immune system. That is, when the snake is snapped in two pieces, it's quite useless to resist. But snakes can shake off minor wounds that would threaten other animals with infections and death. Oh, and here's another very important detail. Snakes are sensitive to the heartbeat of their prey. Usually, the python constricts until the prey asphyxiates and its heart stops. However, that doesn't quite work on crocs. They've evolved to go without oxygen for a long time and not experience any discomfort. So the snake has to squeeze the crocodile's chest with such force that its heart simply doesn't have room to beat. As a result, the animal will die from cardiac arrest, not from asphyxiation.
And although scientists are not completely certain about this, it makes sense to assume that size matters here. Whoever's bigger is likely to win. But if the size and strength are approximately equal, such a fight can last even for five hours. Five hours! It's amazing how they don't get bored. However, if the snake manages to defeat and eat the crocodile, it won't have to eat for another two months. So perhaps such persistence is justified. We do understand the croc too, it just doesn't want to get eaten. What about venomous snakes? They're much more dangerous than pythons, but even in this case, crocodiles have something to counter that. A 2020 study shows that alligator blood has properties that help a predator survive a venomous snake bite without getting any harm. Actually, it all started when these scientists noticed something. From time to time, reptiles eat venomous snakes as if they were, I don't know, lettuce? In short, something completely harmless. So the scientists decided to test the blood of alligators in the lab, and they found something strange. Normally, snake venom is capable of destroying blood cells, but alligator blood inhibits this property. To understand how cool this ability really is, here's a simple fact for you. The venom of this same snake did 100 times more damage to mouse blood than to alligator blood. So when you're this resistant to toxins, you can afford to eat snakes and not think of the consequences. <laughs> but in general, these two seem to be programmed by nature to fight whenever possible. No one will ever agree to simply give up, even if one of the opponents is much larger than the other. Such a battle between a snake and an alligator was seen in Florida. The alligator was simply chewing the snake, despite all the attempts of the prey to escape and crawl away. The snake really tried very hard, although it was clear that it stood no chance. It was a hard-fought battle, but the outcome is, of course, predictable. About 10 minutes later, the alligator won and had lunch. Actually, since alligators can even withstand snake venom, it won't be a problem for them to digest a whole snake. But can a snake digest a crocodile, given its tough armor and sharp teeth? Steve searched for some information, and it seems like snakes can digest and process all the bones, flesh, and organs of a croc as if it were just some kind of hair. However, crocodile body parts containing keratin and enamel can't be digested. Two or three weeks after killing the reptile, the snake pukes everything it didn't digest. And this is a completely natural process that doesn't cause it any inconvenience. But sometimes the desire to eat your opponents ends up, let's say, nasty. Okay, let's be honest, the snake might just burst. This unexpected result of the animal struggle was seen in Florida. A 13-foot-long Burmese python tried to swallow a 6-foot-long alligator, and both died as a result. What exactly happened to the predators is unclear. The remains of a python were found with the victim's tail protruding from its burst midsection. The python's head was missing. Perhaps the alligator hurt the python's stomach with its claws, leading it to burst. However, other experts don't agree with this analysis, and their arguments sound quite convincing. First, snakes can stop when they realize that their prey is too large to be swallowed whole. But in this case, this didn't happen. So it seems like the snake successfully killed and ate the crocodile. The snake did win. Second, Florida is an unnatural environment for this snake species. We're talking about the Burmese python. Actually, these snakes are from Southeast Asia, where it's much warmer than in Florida. Due to the difference in temperature, the snake couldn't digest the croc fast enough to keep it from rotting. And when something rots inside the body, it never ends well. In the end, the snake died, its body burst precisely because of the rotting inside and not because the crocodile was too big. Sounds pretty logical to me. But then there's the question, if Florida isn't the natural habitat for these snakes, how did they even get there? Of course, people had something to do with that. Burmese pythons were introduced to Florida in the 70s and 80s of the 20th century simply for sale as exotic pets. Some of these snakes have been released into the wild, sometimes by accident, sometimes on purpose. It doesn't really matter. Perhaps they wouldn't have been able to adapt and simply would have died out, but the environment turned out to be unexpectedly good for them. With the exception of alligators, there wasn't a single large predator in Florida capable of stopping the spread of the Burmese python. But the alligators failed. The snakes grew in numbers and created a serious population.
Actually, snakes are quite successful in spreading around the planet, and they certainly do it much better than crocodiles. Even the mere fact that snakes can be found on all continents is impressive enough. Well, with the exception of Antarctica, of course. Snakes live in the sea and at altitudes up to 16,000 feet, in forests and deserts and trees and even underground. You may not be aware of it, but the snake may live somewhere very close to you and feel fine. What about crocodiles? Well, they prefer tropical countries, with the exception of the American and Chinese alligators, which live in the southeastern United States and near the Yangtze River. So you get it, right? If we compare the distribution of species, then the snakes clearly have an edge here. Titanoboa can be proud of them. However, success is not only about how widespread the species is, that's not the only factor. We have to consider all of them. So Steve and I put all the facts in one table and after comparing, discussing, and arguing for a while, this is what we got. There's a reason snakes and crocodiles are considered rivals worthy of each other. They exist on our planet long enough to perfectly adapt and learn how to defeat each other. And everything would be fine if a third party didn't intervene in the confrontation of millions of years. Humans. <sighs> yes, humans are to blame again. Today, one in five reptiles in the world is endangered. A new study evaluating more than 10,000 reptile species has found that nearly 2,000 species are not doing so great, to put it mildly. The most threatened reptiles are turtles. About 60% of their species are at risk of extinction. Crocodiles are right behind them. 50% of their species are endangered. Just think about it. Half of all crocodile species may disappear. Since 1500, 31 reptile species have gone extinct, and 40 critically endangered species are possibly extinct, according to data from scientists. That is, no one's seen them for so long that entire species are considered missing. And soon, many crocodiles can disappear like that. More than half of all crocodile species live in forest habitats. And you don't need me to tell you what's happening to the forests. Yes, the disappearance of crocodiles is closely linked to their habitat, including their limited nature. You remember it, right? They prefer the tropics and don't strive to explore new regions. While snakes have learned to adapt to all environments and survive everywhere, crocodiles, for some reason, are a few steps behind. They really haven't changed much since they fought the Titanoboa. And that stagnation could cost them their lives in the future. See you later.